And greetings, friends around the world. We're talking about Al Gore and carbon dioxide and Tom Brokaw and the media and the, the propaganda being fed to the American public in a very effective way so that it's no wonder that the American public for years now has been wondering, does man-made CO2 cause the planet to warm and could it result in catastrophic storms and sea level rising and heat waves and drought. I just saw Tom Brokaw in a documentary put out by Discovery Channel and it is virtually the same material as Al Gore used in his Traveling Salvation show with a slight addition toward the end. It's the same material as Al Gore. In other words, Tom Brokaw is simply a stand-in, stand-in for Al Gore. But with the addition of some what-if type scenarios at the end, showing that the global warming proponents know that our temperature is not unusual, it's typical. True, carbon dioxide has increased. It's been increasing for 20,000, 15,000, 10,000 years. It's higher than it's ever been in the past several hundred thousand years. I have information and I believe it. The amount of CO2 in the air that is anthropogenic, man-made, as a result of human activities. Some experts say that it is 3% of the total CO2 in the atmosphere. In other words, Mother Nature put the other 97% of carbon dioxide there, which would make sense to me because I know that carbon dioxide exhales from warm water, whereas cold water takes in and dissolves carbon dioxide and holds it, just like your Coca-Cola or your beer. Carbonated water is CO2 mixed and dissolved in water. So I'm going to show you Al Gore's data points, which if presented in a more understandable way, shows that this is not the hottest decade of the past umpteen centuries. 1998 was not unusually hot compared to the past several thousand years. I'm going to show the data points. I found their list. The French and Russian scientists who drilled the Vostok ice cores and published the results, somehow didn't protect their data, and I got it, and I can give it to you. It's, uh, I can give you the link. So you can click and see the list of data points drilled at intervals of one meter. Every meter, they took a sample of ice, determined the age of that ice, and the amount of, uh, don't ask me to explain it, deuterium, in order to determine the temperature. The depth, the age, the deuterium, heavy hydrogen, and the extrapolated approximate temperature. I have all these data points. I'm going to show you the first one now. I'm going to show you two of them. Data point 200 and data point 331 by way of introduction. Presenting the Vostok ice core chart. This is a new way of looking at the same data. 
it only covers 50,000 years. You can zoom in on the most recent 10,000 years on the right. Al Gore's chart is turned around backwards. I turn this one around forwards. Here's the way Al Gore presents his chart. These are the five polar bear extinctions. I care about the polar bears, and I'm sure you do too, but you also care about the U.S. economy. Your job and your checkbook, your expenses, your cost of living. The chart used by Al Gore during his Magical Mystery Tour obscures a lot of important information if you're interested in present day climate. The blue smudge, if stretched out, would reveal a lot. For example, let's zoom in on the 5,000 year mark. I'm going to put a red circle around it and zoom in to see what we can see. To see if anything was going on. Well, it looks like business as usual. These movements in temperature up and down are of the same magnitude as the present spike in temperature. The present heat wave. So, does carbon dioxide drive temperature, as Al Gore says? On his chart, it's hard to tell. We can only see that there is a correlation. Keep in mind that these two charts, carbon dioxide and temperature, can be moved around up and down. It can be stretched higher, compressed downward. All you have to do is keep the years synchronized. The year 1000 in temperature must correspond with the year 1000 in, in CO2. I have tried to devise a way to show what is happening in terms of who is leading this dance. These are two partners dancing together. Who is leading? On this chart, on Al Gore's chart, it is difficult to see if the blue line is leading or the green line. And it really doesn't matter because both of these are under the influence of natural effects. Natural. Man wasn't around back then. This is showing 300,000 years ago. There were a few human beings probably living in caves because the temperature was cold, except maybe near the equator. Man was not driving either of these. CO2 is a naturally fluctuating gas. It was naturally fluctuating. It was naturally fluctuating. Why would Al Gore assume that it's not naturally fluctuating now? Why is it suddenly now directly under the control of mankind, when in the past, of course, it was not? From what we've just seen, it's obvious to me that a dropping thermometer results in a dropping green line, which drops slowly. Temperature leads on the way down. But when temperature rises on this chart, which is a crammed a chart with a lot of 
time crammed in real tight. On this chart, it appears that the rise in CO2 corresponds instantly with a rise in temperature. 